carnivore is a ketogenic diet. So I, I follow carnivore, but I still am a ketogenic athlete. I'm still a ketogenic person. My energy management, my health, my lifestyle is ketogenic because really all that means is I've cut out carbs for my life. I was 45 when I started, lots of injuries, lots of aches and pains. I could only work out maybe three days a week without feeling run over all the time. So all of the changes and benefits I got from that and getting stronger, being able to work out more, feeling better, everything just got better. All my injuries in the way, um, things like that. So uh, it was really an experiment. I figured I'd do it for 30 days and here I am four years later still doing it and I have no intention of going back. Carnivore is a ketogenic diet. So I, I follow carnivore, but I still am a ketogenic athlete. I'm still a ketogenic person. My energy management, my health, my lifestyle is ketogenic um, because really all that means is I've cut out carbs for my life. You need to figure out how much protein is good for you. You can find a number and start with that number. And then if you feel like your energy is better, you're getting stronger, you're building lean mass, you're able to do more activities, and things and you're sleeping better and all this stuff is happening, then you know you're getting enough protein. You can stay there. If you want to eat more, here's the thing. Protein is a minimum. Find what works for you. If you go over it, you're golden. You can always have more protein. You can always have more protein. And when it comes to the fuel, you want to find the amount of fuel that your body needs. And how we do that is we try little increments up or little increments down. And we, we say, look, uh, how much fat do I need um, to function, to have energy, to, su to support my hormone function and all these things? Because here's what's going to happen. When your body has more than it needs to function, it's going to store it. So if I'm tracking how much fat I'm taking in and I get to X number, let's say I get to 170 grams, I can eat 170 grams of fat without gaining body fat, then I know that's a good, healthy number for me. If I eat 175 or 180 and I start gaining body fat, then we know that's too much. I've hit my threshold for energy intake. I don't need any more. That has nothing to do with how much protein I'm eating. The idea that if we are high fat, we have to be low protein or that we are low fat, we have to be high protein is completely contradictory to the way our body works. You're always going to be low on one and high on the other or vice versa, a low on, on both or possibly high on both if, because you're basing it on a calorie intake that if calories don't matter, why are we doing percentages based on total calories? It doesn't make sense to me. So ketosis is not the goal of, of the ketogenic diet. And this is also another misunderstanding. Ketosis by definition is a high level of ketones in your blood. Everyone's a little bit different and some people are jump right in. I was a jump right in kind of person. So, you know, jump right into the, I literally, it was like, um, I did some research for like three days and then said, okay, I'm just going to start eating meat. And that's what I did. Um, it was fun. And again, like I said, I just went in all in and haven't gone back. Some people, it, it kind of depends on how, how sad your diet is now and standard American diet, we can uh, pun intended and how much of a transition you actually have to make. So I was whole foods, paleo kind of whole 30 kind of diet already. So there wasn't a lot of processed food. There wasn't a lot of carbs. It was mostly green veggies and things like that, that I cut out. I didn't have a huge transition to make. If someone's coming from a lot of processed food, a lot of seed oils, a lot of processed carbs and things like that, um, they may need to start with low hanging fruit and slowly move their way into it. So let's say you're on the far spectrum of really unhealthy diet. I would say the first thing to do is cut out all seed oils and go with animal based fats. Number one, that's the first thing, cut that out, go with butter and lard and tallow, that kind of stuff for all your cooking. Um, and then secondly, or at the same time, just generally increase the amount of animal meat that you eat. Your body needs a certain amount of fat to survive and function. Give it that. But you don't need to give it more than that because then what are we doing? There's a diminishing return and it goes to body fat. It's not helping anything. And then the same with protein. Your protein needs a certain amount of protein to function. So find out what that is and give it that. You can give it a little bit more and it may help in some other areas, particularly if you're specifically trying to grow lean mass and build muscle and be athletic. Um, but again, there can be a point of diminishing return. Now, it's not as harmful. Excess protein is not as harmful as excess fat because it's not going to get stored as fat. It's going to get excreted from the body. Hey there, I wanted to let you know about my latest book, Body Confident, that's coming out in September 2024. Call it a critical thinking guide to your health journey because it is 
a framework, a guide, a blueprint that's going to help you understand and be able to filter all the information that's out there on the internet that you're getting from social media, YouTube, go to bodyconfidentbook.com, prioritizing protein. Not only is it is prioritizing it important in the amount, but literally when you sit down at your plate, eat it first. Like fill your plate up with as much protein as you think you can eat. If you want to have carbs in your plate, that's great. Realize that if you fill up on protein, you don't have to eat the carbs. And if you don't, no big deal. You got your protein, you got your fat, and you're good to go. I don't do a ratio. I just I just test and see what I need for each. And just like I was saying, so I'm currently doing about 200 grams of protein. Uh, that is my goal because I'm trying to maximize as much muscle potential as I have, as I can. And I'm doing about 135 to 150 grams of fat a day to try to manage my, if I, I know that if I get to 170, 175 grams of fat, then I start putting on fat. So I try to stay, you know, 10, 15, you know, maybe 20 grams under that. So 135 to 150, 135 is what I put in chronometer, but I'm usually around 150. Fasting is another thing that, that kind of gets my goat. I think it's confusing for people and people get caught up in trying to fast and miss out on the fact that their body needs nutrition. Get the nutrition you need first. Everybody that I've worked with who comes and says, I've been intermittent fasting, I've been doing high fat, I've been doing high protein, I've been doing this or that, or uh, doing red light therapy, I'm doing cold therapy, I'm doing these ketones, uh, whatever these biohacks and all these tweaks are for the proper human diet, ha aren't doing the proper human diet. They're doing, I'm eating some meat and then trying all this other stuff on top of it. Like, let's get back to the basics. Eat the meat, manage your fuel intake. Don't eat all fatty meat all the time. It's okay to have fish. It's okay to have filet. It's okay to have something that doesn't have some fat on it sometimes. You're not going to die. Your body needs a protein. Enjoy it. Muscle is grown during rest, not during work. Your body recovers during rest, not during work. All of the things that manage your hormones and bring your hormones into balance happen when you're not working. So if you're doing CrossFit five or six days a week, you're probably overdoing it and you're going to have struggles losing body fat because and building muscle because you're going to have high cortisol, your body's going to be stressed and you're doing what you're, you're it's chronic overtraining, chronic fatigue. What you want to do, there's a concept, if you, anyone wants to Google super compensation, it's an exercise science term that basically means when we, when we stimulate a system, if I stress out a system and then give it time to rest properly, the next time I apply that same level of stress or that same stimulus to that system, it should be able to perform better. Outside of that, we're talking about general stress management techniques, about things that are happening in your life, your environment, your work, your family, your relationships, finances, your ability to, to mentally handle stress. And then on the second thing there is your physical condition. The more muscle you have, the more in shape you are, the more conditioned you are, the more you can handle stress because emotional stress, all that stuff that you're having problems with at work, all the, the fight you had with your spouse the other day, your kids are getting on your nerves, your money is, is not looking good, you got bills, whatever it is, all that stuff manifests physically. So one of the benefits of exercise is the ability to handle external stresses and reduce overall cortisol. So the idea that we need to be worried about cortisol all the time is more about just take it away from the cortisol and just look at overall stress. Okay. Um, the idea that being low fat long-term raises cortisol so that we can, because cortisol is what kicks in gluconeogenesis to make sugar and blah, 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 blah. I wouldn't rather have my cortisol go up being no carb and having being ketogenic and my had and have gluconeogenesis kick in to supply glycogen when needed at that level, that level of cortisol raise is here compared to what it is with carbs. It's really about looking at what is the lifestyle that you want to live? Why do I want to get in shape? Why am I doing this diet? What am I doing this whole thing for? It's about quality of life. So as much as everybody starts this for saying and saying that they want to lose weight, they want to get skinny, they want to do all these things on about the scale. It's really not about the scale. Something about their lives is limiting them. There's something that they're not able to do or they're unhappy with, or they have discomfort and they think losing the weight is going to fix that problem. What it's, what they really need to realize is that the weight is a symptom of something deeper. And that has to do with what their body can do and how their body is functioning. 
So fitness is all about what do you want to do with your life? How do you want to live your life? I have a lot of people who their their fitness restrictions are simple things like being able to walk up the stairs. And that's the challenge that can immediately affect the quality of their life if they could just walk up the stairs more times throughout the day. So their goal, my goal for them, and when I work with them is your fitness program for the first week, the first two weeks, three weeks, whatever it is, is get to a point where you can walk up and down the stairs 10 times in a day and it feels easy. Because that's number one, it's that's the limiting thing in your life right now. So we want to overcome that. Number two, just getting you moving to the point where you can walk up the stairs and make it easy is going to improve your ability to move, your muscle, your energy management, all sorts of things that affect other areas of total quality of life. So the 1% rule, which basically means just do 1% more than you're doing now. It doesn't have to be complicated. You can do something at home. You could join a gym if you want to. Um, no, whatever you do, find something that is difficult now in your life physically and then make it easy. Hey there, did you know that I have a free community on Discord? If you go to discord.coachbronson.com, you can join my community. You can meet other people. You can engage in a group of individuals who are all searching for and having success in finding their context and the solutions that will work best for them. Hop yourself in there, discord.coachbronson.com. See you soon.